Welcome to our Palm Sunday online service. Today marks the beginning of the Holy Week. Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, O King of Israel! Hosanna in the highest! Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing by words and of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today, we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters His own city to complete His work as our Savior, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with Him in faith and love, so that, united with Him in His sufferings, we may share His risen life. God our Savior, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of His victory, and grant that we who bear them in His name may ever hail Him as our King, and follow Him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When Jesus and His disciples were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a coat that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a coat tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the coat? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord Christ. Christ. So now, let us go forth praising Jesus, our Messiah.
Let us pray for a closer union with Christ in His suffering and His glory. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 31. Let us say it responsively. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the streets flee from me. I have passed out of mine like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servants. Save me in your steadfast love. Let, Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, 
who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ, Christ King, King of, of eternal, eternal glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, 
one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows thrice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up! Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, when he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, 
I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testament, testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with, with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your dis decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him saying to him, Prophecy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You were also with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the crook crowd. And the servant girl on seeing him begin, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows again twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate 
to do for them according to his custom? Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, and they caught together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some horns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage of him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stake, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women 
who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been torn out of the crock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the passion of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord our God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I hope uh, my dear free servers are not too tired after listening to such a long gospel passion reading. Good morning and warm welcome once again, dear brothers and sisters at home, uh, part participating in this online Palm Sunday service. This morning, we prepare ourselves on Palm Sunday and at the beginning of this Holy Week. Particularly when we listened to chapter 15 of St. Mark's Gospel, in this chapter, Jesus endures the violence and humiliating mechanisms of Roman power. Mark tells this story with a paradoxical emphasis on both divine providence and human agency. Each emphasis warrants some explanation, but I will dedicate more time of reflection to the second, that is human agency. Mark conveys God's providence chiefly through allusion to Jewish scripture, showing a special similarity with the Psalms. Jesus' silence before his accusers echoes Psalm 38 verses 13 to 14. The dividing of Jesus' clothes echoes Psalm 22, 18. The mockery of onlookers, those bystanders, at the crucifixion echoes Psalm 22, 6 to 8. And Jesus' cry of abandonment quotes directly from Psalm 22, verse 1. Preceding Mark 15, uh, that is the first part uh, of our gospel reading this morning, are other references to scriptural fulfillment, including chapter 14, verse 27, and verse 49, as well as Jesus' own repeated predictions of his passion and of his resurrection. Taken all these together, these details give the impression that Good Friday falls within God's all-embracing providence. Notice that this is different from saying that everything is scripted as if God were moving chess pieces in a disrespectable plot to sacrifice his son Jesus. Rather, Mark weaves various moments of scriptural fulfillment into his narrative 
to convey divine faithfulness. Divine faithfulness in continuity with God's ancient covenant with Israel. We see the depths of his divine faithfulness most clearly in Jesus' commitment to his mission, which is the rest restoration of humans and communities to every level of wholeness. Jesus refuses to dial down this ministry to spare his own life, or even to soften the backlash, facing hostility in full confidence that God brings life from the death. It is the God of the Psalms, the God of Israel, acting through Jesus on our behalf. This brings us to Mark's emphasis on human agency, an emphasis so prevalent that it is easy to overlook its significance. More than anything, Mark simply wants us to see the human capacity, both for coming to Jesus and for killing him. On the one hand, mostly in the first half of the narrative, we see crowds of people repeatedly drawn to his ministry. He heals all the sick and welcomes all the sinners, bringing human wholeness without regard for approved methods and times. But on the other hand, Jesus' indifference to approval provokes the anger of those claiming the authority to approve and to condemn. In Mark 15, this hatred finally turns deadly. It is particularly noteworthy that the way Mark casts human hatred in forms of mockery especially on the question of Jesus' messianic or royal identity. It is precisely Jesus' claim to be the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One, that invites the high priest's verdict of blasphemy and the mockery of the priestly council in chapter 14, verses 61 to 65. When Pontius Pilate repeatedly calls Jesus the king of the Jews, we hear a hint of belittling irony. Roman soldiers said to this by dressing Jesus up like a pathetic king and paying mock tribute to him. Remember the purple cloth on him and the crown of thorns. Most devastating are the moments of mockery from three different character groups while Jesus is hanging upon the cross. In fact, I am inclined to read the so-called confession of the Roman centurion as a continuation of this ironic mockery rather than an authentic epiphany into Jesus' identity. The centurion says, truly, this man was God's son. Regardless of how we interpret the centurion, the Markan motif of mockery highlights the ugly depths of human hatred toward Jesus and toward his mission. It adds to the downgrading of Jesus. In keeping with how Rome used crucifixion, as an instrument of extreme dehumanization, as a public display to deter the slightest hint of rebellion. No wonder Jesus dies alone, abandoned by his fearful disciples, save for a female remnant looking on from a safe distance. Mark's audience may come to the story knowing that Jesus' promises of resurrection win out over his cry of abandonment. But that knowledge does not reduce the bitter agony of this moment. As the one who came to heal is broken, as the one who came to dignify, 
is humiliated. Dear sisters and brothers of St. Augustine's, amongst all the four gospel books, Jesus in Mark's gospel is the lonelier, is the loneliest. It seems like the case that he is all alone throughout his course of suffering and death. All his disciples showed the great extent of fear and were absent from the scene of crucifixion. As a disciple of the present time in the year 2021, dear brothers and sisters, we need to ask if we are also so fearful when threats are shown to us in our lives. We need to answer the question honestly if we will also be absent or we will move away from Jesus further and further. Palm Sunday is indeed a good timing for us to ask this question before we approach Good Friday when Jesus will be crucified genuine answer to this question may rightly prepare us for the death and resurrection of Jesus in this forthcoming Passover triduo. Three days ago during our diocesan clergy meeting, the Reverend Lucas Durant of Resurrection Church in Saigon shared his analysis on Mark 15, saying that it is a gospel record which is both tragic and at the same time glorious. Yes, tragic and glorious at the same chapter of the narrative which I cannot agree more. The crucifixion of Jesus was surely a time that was most tragic to his whole life of incarnation. During the whole process of his trial, mockery, insult, and suffering. Jesus literally experienced the most trying time in his whole life in those 33 years of time. This is tragic in a sense that what Jesus has tried his utmost to build up in the last three years, when he cured all the sicknesses and casted out all the demons, was now all drawn to an end on the cross of Calvary. What was added to this tragedy was that he was physically abused, beaten up to severe injuries, and insulted to the worst for a human being. The miserable experience of Jesus during his suffering is the most tragic moment when we remember the physical life of Jesus on earth. But on the contrary, we may also find glorious or victorious moments in this 15th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, when we see Simon the Cyrene helping Jesus to bear the heavy burden of the wooden cross, or when we read the Roman centurion acknowledging Jesus' identity, truly this man was God's son. These moments are particularly glorious as the salvation of the suffering God has been revealed not only to the community of the disciples, but also to Gentiles and other ethnicities. The Gospel writer Mark humorously pointed out that it was the Gentiles and the outcasts who have experienced the love and salvific power of God much, much earlier than those Jewish disciples. This moment is glorious or victorious in a sense that the salvation of God can be reached out to all the nations and all the people over the whole world. So dear sisters and brothers of St. Augustine's, Mark 15 provides an opportunity to explore into the suffering of Jesus because attention to suffering is the first step in God's mission of human wholeness. It also points out the significant significance of Jesus' crucifixion 
as it demonstrated God's complete solidarity with human suffering and moral, moral and mortality. There are all sorts of people in Hong Kong who are right now facing human suffering. One key question we may need to ask very honestly is that, are we willing to get closer to these people who are acutely facing their sufferings? Can we approach them with the necessary empathy and love so that we can be with them even in their most tragic times in life? By doing so, we are showing our solidarity with the crucified people in our midst in Hong Kong. And I sincerely hope that all our sisters and brothers in this chapel or who are now taking part on the online service can become the human agency to witness the love and salvation of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, as we proceed to the Holy Week this year. May God use each one of us for these crucified people in our midst so that we can all contribute a little bit in the glorious part or victorious part of the crucifixion of Jesus. May God bless you all in this Holy Week. Amen. Amen. So now please rise and let us confess our faith as we say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us remain standing for the intersections. We pray together with Christ in his suffering. For forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Christians, that through the suffering of disunity, there may grow a rich union in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who weigh down with hardship, failure, or sorrow, feel that God is far from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. So now let us say together that Christ said again. Holy, holy God, God, holy, holy and, and strong, holy, holy and, and immortal, have, have mercy upon us. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. And now the chapel choir will offer an anthem. Hosanna to the Son of David.
page 7 of the pew sheets. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. With them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near to the whole world, is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels forever praising you and saying, Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim this, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirits, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and, and honor, honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ taught us, so we pray. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until, until he, he comes. comes.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and, and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful, Faithful God, God, may, may we, we who share this banquet, banquet Glory in the, in the cross, cross of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ our, our salvation, salvation, life and hope, who reigns as Lord now, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, once again, a very good morning to all of you who are taking part in this online uh, Palm Sunday service at home. Uh, well, relatively, this one uh, must be longer than what you have experienced uh, throughout Lent. Uh, I hope you are uh, still uh, very attentive and uh, towards the end of this service, I hope you can still remember uh, that very long gospel reading and what I have shared uh, just here about the preparation of uh, Holy Week. Uh, well, the announcements are actually all printed in your pew sheet from page 9 to page uh, 14 and 15. I, I would just like to draw your attention to uh, slightly a, a few of the points. Uh, point on page 10 uh, about our chapel finance, uh, please continue uh, to do your either auto pay or well, uh, use your different means uh, to uh, deposit your offerings to our chapel uh, bank account. And do let uh, Tim and Lincoln know after you have done so. Uh, Sunday school Zoom classes, I guess most of you uh, have just finished this morning, uh, starting at 9.15. For those uh, who have children aged from 3 years old to 12 years old, uh, you are more than welcome to join us. And you can ask Joanna Yin for more details. For choir members, recruitment, um, well, as you can hear this morning, although we cannot see them physically, but actually our chapel choir members have done a great job uh, in recording uh, our anthem. So uh, if you are also talented or gifted in singing, do uh, let Shelley Young know and uh, well, she will contact you uh, for the following steps. Uh, Lent is almost coming to an end, but uh, this coming Wednesday 
evening, we still have our sung even song to be broadcasted on Facebook page of Holy Trinity Cathedral. Uh, I do hope that you will join us because uh, well, the three clergies, including myself, we have really tried very hard uh, to practice singing those psalms. So do join us. Uh, um, it will not be very long. I think it's something like uh, 40 to 45 minutes uh, on Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Uh, Holy Week is coming uh, this coming Thursday, Thursday at 8 p.m. Uh, also on the Facebook page of Holy Trinity uh, Cathedral. Please join us for the Maundy Thursday Eucharist. And then on Good Friday, uh, also on Facebook page of Holy Trinity Cathedral, Friday morning at 11 a.m., uh, we have our uh, Remembering uh, Liturgy for the Crucifixion of Jesus, for the suffering of Jesus. Uh, do join us. And then uh, the holiest time, uh, the most uh, sacred time, will be Saturday night, Saturday evening at 8 p.m., uh, Saturday the 3rd of April. That will be the Easter vigil time. Uh, well, just to let you know, actually five of our St. Augustine's Chapel members, uh, if God willing, uh, if we can resume physical uh, services, then five of us will be baptized uh, during this service at 8 p.m., in Holy Trinity Cathedral. So do join us on the Facebook page of uh, Holy Trinity Cathedral. Then you can witness uh, our five members uh, who are going to be baptized uh, in, in Holy Trinity. And then, uh, well, most importantly, on Easter Sunday, definitely, uh, you will come back to our St. Augustine's Facebook page uh, at 10.30 a.m. for our service. Uh, but, well, a little bit earlier, at 9 a.m., you can also go to the uh, Holy Trinity Cathedral Facebook page uh, for the Easter Sunday service. And then, well, all the news uh, on page 11, please take notes, and if you are interested, uh, do join them. And then, I would like to draw your attention on page 12, point number 3. The solemn liturgy for the blessing of oils on Monday, Thursday, and the renewal of commitment to priestly service by the clergy. Well, just like last year, uh, we cannot invite all of you to join it uh, physically. We cannot invite you to join in person, but we would invite you to join us. Uh, you can join on the provincial website or the website of St. John's Cathedral or even on YouTube. And you can uh, witness Archbishop Andrew Chan uh, presiding, uh, celebrating and preaching as well as blessing all the oils. All the provincial clergy will attend and renew our commitment to our priesthood. So do join us this Thursday morning at 10 a.m. from YouTube, from provincial website, or from St. John's Cathedral website. And last but not least, I would like all of you to pay attention again to the daily word. Uh, actually, every day, uh, literally every day, we have one provincial clergy writing up some uh, sharings from the lectionary of that day. So all the clergy have tried very hard. They do not just write it, they actually recorded it uh, audioly. So uh, you can uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, either the English one or the Chinese one. Uh, both are welcome. So do join us. Uh, it will not finish in Lens. Uh, it will not finish on the 4th of Easter. We will, it will carry on. So do join us. It is really a very, very good tool for spirituality, uh, spirituality practices. So please join us. Uh, for the courses of Minghua Theological College, as well as the Religious Education Center activities, please uh, refer to page 13 and 14. Just one uh, very, very uh, final notice on page 15. This will be um, a book uh, written by Father N Nadim Nassar. He is actually now uh, a clergy in the Church of England, but his origin uh, is from Syria, uh, from Syria, a place in the Middle East uh, full of wars. Uh, all their uh, places are always ruined by gunpowers and shoots. But uh, Father Nadim has written this very nice book, The Culture of God. Um, it is translated into Chinese, so uh, Dean Samson Fan uh, has recorded uh, some guidance of this book for us. So, well, you can either um, buy the English book or you can buy the Chinese translated book. 
and prepare yourselves uh, for this uh, Easter tide from the 4th of April to the 23rd of May. So do join us, buy the book together and uh, study the book together. The deadline for this is tomorrow. So, uh, well, you can scan the QR code here on page 15 for buying the book and for joining the campaign. And this is what I want to share for the notices this morning. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only Son bring you by faith to his eternal life. Amen. May Christ, who accepted a cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. Amen. May the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.